Hi guys, Debbie Dubois here. I'm gonna do something that I've never done before, but I'm excited about it because for those of you who've been watching my channel for any period of time, you know that I have literally had a renaissance of wanting to do oracle card readings. And the reason why is because of a particular deck that I absolutely love. And um, it's the Intuit Oracle by Aria. So the long saga made really, really short is, is that in January or February, Aria, also Kimberly Fisher, created this deck like in a two week period of time and went to Kickstarter to create, um, you know, what, what has taken off to be an incredible um, experience for me personally because of the fact that when she showed me her deck, I got really super excited and I immediately ordered the highest sponsorship that I could because I knew that those cards were the kind of cards that I was going to be able to read. Um, I'm not real tarot oriented. Um, it doesn't mean that I haven't done tarot. I just, her card spoke to me. So I knew that these were something that I wanted. So I got the most, you know, highest sponsorship package and I expressed my interest. Well, for those of you who don't know, I have my own digital marketing agency. So I told her, I want to represent this product. I want to bring this product to market. So um, she was like, okay. So we did a little bit of collaboration, which is what's happening with a lot of the Lightworker communi uh, community. And uh, I'm very excited to say that after this whole entire experience, I finally got my brand new set that everyone else is starting to get. And those of you have not gotten yours, if you're not in the United States, if you happen to be in Australia or Europe, yours are on the way. I know that Kimberly sent them the um, fastest shipping that she could. It's been crazy, a crazy ride. I was one of the people that was fortunate enough to get a temporary deck, which was quite expensive to print, and it was not the actual deck. So, I have my actual package and what I wanted to do since I've been working with the deck for a while is I wanted to do a, a box opening and unboxing show those of you who have the cards you know what I know about the cards I've been working with them for about two three months uh, yeah three months because I've done three zodiac um, months zodiac and um, I know a lot of you that have ordered the cards are really excited um, and want to know how to, how to use them. Um, I can first of all say that there is no set way on how you can use these. You can create any of your, your own, um, any of your own readings, setups. Sometimes I find myself reading them different than others, but I thought I would share with you what I know. And uh, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the weekly reading. So um, I think I'll do a part two for the weekly reading to keep this within a reasonable length of time. So let's go ahead. I am going to unbox these suckers. I wanna know, I wanna see what the actual cards feel like because the cards that I got have a slightly different stock, I understand. Um, Kimberly made a lot of changes to the cards. As we were working with the cards, and we would do readings with each other, um, you know, I would do readings for my business, I, and I would say, you know, this card's giving me a hard time. I'm not really sure. And she's like, yeah, it's giving me a hard time too. So she actually went ahead and made changes through this whole process. Now, you'll see that I have two boxes here. Oh my gosh, here they are. I have two boxes here because of the fact that I, um, like I said, I subscribed at the highest level, so I got an extra box. Um, this box is going to be a box that I am going to give away. Um, I was talking about, um, I guess I can get rid of my scissors. I was talking uh, last month about how I'm going to do a live reading uh, and I'm going to choose somebody to do the live reading with, and we're going to answer a ton of your questions. I'm still going to do that, but now that we have the cards, I thought it would be better because what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to give away one of my sets. 
in a drawing. So I, not only am I going to give away a free reading on YouTube Live, and we're probably going to do that. I'm going to say I'm on vacation next week, but when I come back, that's what I want to do. I have instructions in the comment, you know, below if you are still interested in um, registering for that because I basically um, did this a couple weeks ago and I have a lot of people but I haven't closed it off so there's a few things that you have to do in order to be um, you know qualified to, to get the free reading and the free deck of cards but those are the two things that I'm gonna do so without further ado I'm going to turn my attention to the cards I'm actually going to center in here I'm gonna just open up one of the sets because I have not even oh my gosh this is so exciting all right hang on now I don't want to rip this box this is the shipping box it comes in very classy so are you really oh my gosh look at this oh <gasps> she really went all out and that was one of the things that I loved about what she was doing is she went all out. And um, you know what? I've got such a mess over here. I'm going to clean. I'll just throw this stuff off in the side. <laughs> and clean up my area. I'm such a neat freak. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll put these cards over here. All right. So how is the best way to do this? With I do not want to um, mess up this box at all look at this it's got like this this purplish color is just like old wallpaper <gasps> oh my god Kimberly you did such a great job I'm so proud of you all right so what we have here whoa we have we have a magnetic closure right here so this snaps closed all right so this tells what's in it we're gonna open up the box and it does, you know, you want to go kind of carefully so you can, you know, it's going to probably take some breaking in, all right? It's got a little uh, ribbon. I've got dogs barking, and trust me, if I waited until the house was quiet, we would never have any videos. <laughs> so please, my, please don't mind that. Oh, <gasps> and here they are. It starts with card number one, which is the rider. Oh, my God. God, I'm so excited. Now, I'm looking for my, oh, hang on a second. I was just looking for my other cards to see what kind of size difference we have, if there's any size difference. Okay, no, the card size is the difference, but you know what I can tell is that mine are so worn out. I'm really looking forward to the actual card stock. Okay, so let's see how we can, again, I don't want to hurt this. I really don't like ugh, having to open up. Oh, this isn't too bad, though. The um, Whenever you got cellophane, <sighs> Christmas time is a nightmare for me with my kids because they always get stuff that's, um, <gasps> oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I love them. Look at this. Oh, wow. I love the feel of them. Yeah, there's a definite difference in the cards. I'm really excited about that because I liked my cards that I had before. But, um, all right, so let's get the scissors out of here. So look at, so we've got something that we can put the cards back in. I'm going to do that right now because I have had to have my cards out all the time. Now I've got a protected place for them and I can just use this to pull, to pull the cards out. Fantastic. And then, all right, this stuff is... Uh, it's tourmalated quartz. All right, let's see. Oh, oh my God. Oh, the energy off of this is incredible. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Look at this, tourmalated quartz. So what this does is it connects with all the chakras, the third eye, the crown chakra, and it works in tandem to provide grounding to the root chakra. So it's saying here, I'm looking at this, it says complete energetic flow enables all the chakras to emanate more white light from the crown chakra, heightening your connection to higher self. Well, we are going to see in my reading how this impacts the reading because I've been getting some pretty accurate readings 
I want to tell you um, quickly, I was at the hairdressers. If you can see, I've gotten rid of my, my roots from the last video. But anyways, I was talking to my hairdresser, and she doesn't usually watch readings, but she saw my reading. And she told me that the Virgo reading was talking about um, changing jobs. And she is literally changing jobs. Like, she was like, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, so there's been some cool things coming out of these cards. Um, but look at this tourmaline quartz. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. And then there's like this little bag that you can put it all in and keep it in here with your cards to keep them clear, to keep them charged. And uh, I have a feeling when I do my reading, I am going to... Uh, Put some of these out. All right, so this is the packaging. So we've already, so we've done the, the box opening. All right, so we've got here, this is brand new for me. I've never done this before, so just bear with me. All right, so she's got pictures of the cards on this side too, and then we've got this beautiful, um, I wanna say like old fashioned wallpaper. So anyways, this is incredible. I've gotta say Kimberly, great job you did great goddess i'm so proud of you so now what we're gonna do is i'm gonna pull out the cards and let's take a look i'm gonna go through these cards with you and um i do need to hang on just one second all right um we're gonna go through the cards uh the card number one is the rider card number two is the clover I'm seeing some changes already I love it card number three is the ship card number four is the house card number five is the tree now you'll notice that there is a number and there is a card this is because it's Lenormand based all right I don't know maybe in that particular case you can see it in the next one the seven and the queen so you can actually, these are Lenormand based cards. So if you're familiar with Lenormand, you can use those as well. I don't typically use the numbers. I use the words. Keywords to me just pop a bunch of information for me. So, all right, so we're looking at clouds is number six. Whoops, it's gonna keep being consistent here. Um, number seven is the snake. Number eight is a card that I don't like to see, is the coffin. <laughs> Now the thing is, is that the coffin is like the death card in that it's often about, um, you know, what's transitioning in your life. Number nine is the bouquet. Number 10 is the scythe. Number 11 is the whip, which is interesting. The number 11, hmm, the whip. All right, number 12 is birds. You can see each of these cards has very simple imagery, very classic, simple imagery. And for me, I get so much more information with a simple graphic than I do with too much chaos. It just, I just tune into my own energy much better. All right, so we've got the fox, which is number 14. Number 15 is the bear. Number 16 is the stars. Number 17, and I happen to love the number 17 for my own reasons, um, is the stork. We've got number 18 is the dog. I love that card, supportive energy. Um, number 19 is the tower. Number 20 is the garden. Number 21 is the mountain. Number 22, got the master number 22 is a crossroads the road number 23 which is my absolute number that is my number um, is mice which I don't know if I like the mice being my number <laughs> because it's about stress please no <laughs> all right number 24 is the heart number 25 is the ring and there's two sets of rings in this deck. One is more about um, agreements, and the other one is more about taking things to the next level. So we'll, I'm sure we'll see that. Number 26 is the book. Number 27 is the letter. Number 28 is the man. Number 29 is the woman. Number 30 is the lily. 
gosh, I really love the feel of these cards, guys. They're so, they're actually so much nicer even than the cards that I have. So, all right, the sun, the moon is number 32. Sorry, the other one was 31 was the sun. 32 is the moon. 33, one of my favorite um, cards in the deck is the key. I also like this one. I'm partial to certain cards. If you can tell, it's the theme of the card. Um, number 34 is uh, fish. Then we've got 35 is the anchor. 36 is cross. 37 is the archer, which I love because I'm a Sagittarius. All right, then we've got the wheel of fortune is 38. 39 is the tracks. I really like this card. We've got the wine, which is 40. 41 is balance. 42 is stalemate. 43 is the lighthouse. 44 is the tornado, and actually, I really like when this card appears for a lot of reasons, which I'll get into. All right, number 45 is the snowflake. Um, number 46 comes up a lot in Ascension. We're dealing with the mortar and pestle, creating something new. Um, another card that comes up a lot is broom. We've got the, that's 47. Just an 11, incidentally. Um, 48 is the bridge. 49 is the child. 50 is the mask. I'm going to stop here. I want to show you something. In the corner here is 51 and 15. In Lenormand cards, they're red in pairs. This is like two Lenormand decks, okay? And I'm just going to... I picked this one up because it's 51 and... One, one, five, one, and one, five, which happens to be that mirror image. The 51 card pairs with the 15 card, okay? So the left card is the number of the card. The one on the right is the one it pairs with naturally, like in the Lenormand deck, okay? I mean, it's the second, in other words, this is the 15th card of the, of the next deck. All right, just wanted to mention that. 52 is double rainbow. Stepping stones, we get this one a lot, 53. The white is probably a little bit harder for you guys to read. 54 is a third person. 55 is clock. 56 is Milky Way. 57 is island. 58 is compass. And if, you're, if you really want to move through this part fast, just go ahead and put me on double time. It works really well. I do it all the time. <laughs> it gets how I get to watch so many videos. I just put everybody on double time. I've gotten really good at listening. Number 59 is yarn. Number 60 is the Celtic knot. Now this is the other ring, okay? And I'm probably, the 25 is probably the other, is the ring that we saw before. That's the diamond ring, and this one is next level in union. We have the light bulb, which is number 62. We have 63, which is the magnifying glass. We have 64, which is the man. This is another man, all right? And 65 is the other woman, another woman. We've got a second woman in the deck. 66 is fireworks. 67 is trophy. 68 is magnet. 69 is bellows. 70 is waterfall. 71 is the ball and chain. 72 is the church. Whoops. <laughs> the cards let very, very, oh, I like they spread easily. All right. Number one. Okay, these are the animal spirit cards. All right. So this is just a different deck, but it mixes in with everything else. The rabbits, the falcon, which is number two, the ladybug, which is number three, 
the stallion, which is number four. Number five is the grasshopper. Number six is the swans. My favorite card in the deck. I cannot lie. <laughs> um, the white wolf is number seven. Number eight is beaver. Uh, the moose is number nine. The loons is number 10. Number 11 is the firefly. I love the dolphins too. That's number 12. Love the energy of the dolphins card. 13, this is a new card that I have not seen yet. It's the elephant. I absolutely love this card. I cannot wait to see this card in one of my readings. And I don't even know what's on it because I didn't take time to look yet. I'll, I'll see it with all the rest of you. All right. Uh, the geese is number 14. Number 15 is the lion. And this is a new picture from what I've used. So I absolutely love it. Uh, this is a new card as well. Not a new card, but the owl. This is a new picture from what I've seen. So, And it's got, it has got some new words on it, I can tell, which is going to be fun. That's number 16. Number 17 is the raccoon. And I like that. Oh, I know someone who is the raccoon. Ask lots of questions. You know who you are. <laughs> 18 is the squirrel. Interesting. There's some changes to that as well. 19 is the eagle. Number 20 is Wolverine. 21 is the albatross. Number 22 is the crow. And I think I like, oh yes, I definitely like some of the changes to the words because this card always gave me a hard time, a little bit anyways. 23, another 23. I like this card for 23. This is the butterfly. And 24 is the hummingbird. This is a new card. I have not seen, well, no, I haven't seen the hummingbird. All right, so now we're getting into the, um, we are getting into the uh, zodiac cards. Okay, so of course we have Aries, we have Taurus, we have Gemini. And what I've heard, I've actually heard people say that people appreciate the diversity on the cards and, and Aria actually went to a lot of trouble to find images that represent all of humanity. So we've got Cancer, we've got Leo, we've got Virgo, we have Libra. Did I say Libra? Maybe I meant Leo. I don't know. Maybe I misspoke. I'm sorry. Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. All right, so those are the Zodiac cards. And now we have, oh my gosh, I forgot. We have cards I've never seen before. I'm so excited. All right, so these are the planets. We've got Uranus, Mercury, the moon, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, I love these cards, um, Mars, the sun, the Pluto, the Pluto, Saturn, and I actually like Saturn so much. I love the restriction of Saturn, and I never thought I would ever say that. I would never think I'd think that. Okay, so now we have, these are bonus cards. So these came with, I don't know how, I'll have to ask um, Aria, like, how many of these are, how who gets these, and but I have not gotten them. This is the new moon, is a maiden. This is the waxing quarter, which is the mother. Oh, I cannot wait to read these cards. We've got the full moon, which is the queen. And then we have the waning quarter, which is the crone. So these cards I have not seen before. And she did put some specials on here from people that she works with, including me. So there's special offers on the, the back of these cards. And I have to take a look. at. I know, I know Green Woman Wisdom, that is my friend Lisa. Oh my God, she's wonderful. I don't know about the other two people in this deck, but I'm sure if they're in there, they're fantastic. All right, 
Um, so, okay, so we have some other cards that I've not seen. All right, these are seven cards. Now, this is something that's just for the for the backers of this program. So if you backed this Kickstarter program, you got these extra cards. The fire, the element of fire, earth, water, air, um, the cardinal signs, the fixed signs, and the mutable signs. So these are six cards that if you were one of the backers, and all I can say is, is when she gets ready to do another deck, it's incredible to be a backer. I absolutely loved being part of a process of helping someone bring to fruition an incredible idea. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is um, just kind of give you an idea without shuffling, without going into a lot, because obviously this deck needs to really be shuffled. Um, and I don't want to take up a lot of time, but what I am going to do is I'm going to give you an idea of how I use these cards. And um, we're going to just take from the middle of the deck so that, and I'll put the rest of the cards over here, just so that, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with some of the primary cards. So you shuffle and you end up with three cards in a row, okay? Now, the way I always read these cards is in pairs. I don't say always, but this is how I typically do for those of you who have watched any of my readings. I use the middle card as the card that is the pre predominant energy of whatever question I'm asking. These cards are very question oriented and constructing your questions is probably one of the most important things that you can do when using this deck. You want to be sure that you're not asking questions like yes or no. Like, is this person ever going to contact me again? Yes or no? No. It'll be more like, under what circumstances will this person contact me again? And then it gives you deeper answers. So I would say that the thing that you want to learn most in dealing with this uh, Intuit Oracle is how to construct your questions. Make them questions that... Um, you know, what will be the outcome if I do this? What kind of circumstances will happen if I do that? And I've been able to use these cards actually in business because I've been able to say, well, what if I run this social media campaign now without, you know, looking into this or looking into that? What will be the outcome if I you know, put most of my money into this versus this, and literally I get answers, which is kind of creepy and spooky. But what's really funny is, is that we've actually tested this and went ahead and run a campaign to see what was going to happen. And we've actually had some pretty amazing parallels to what we were told was going to happen. And Kimberly and I, we got a lot of that while we were um, going through this whole process. So very interesting. So let's go back to the cards. All right. So the predominant energy in a question. So the question might be, um, is, it a, is it the right time for me to launch this particular campaign? Well, the clock comes up and it says it's perfect timing. All right. And then over here is networking, social media, marketing. If I pair these two together, because you pair them together, when you, pair, when you pair the different elements together, it gives you more information, which is what I love about these cards. So what's perfect timing? It is perfect timing for me to launch this campaign. It is going to expand. It is going to get exposure. It is going to spotlight whatever I'm trying to achieve. In other words, as a digital marketer, for me to pick these cards is like, okay, my campaign's ready to go. But then you have to go and you look at what are the other elements. So we pair it with this. Okay, so there's a third person involved, there's an outside, there's a rival card. It's like, okay, it's perfect timing, but you may end up with someone who's running a campaign at the same time. It might eat into, you know, your, your campaign a little bit. Um, or maybe a third person involved, maybe you're getting information that you need to check this, run this whole thing past a third person who might make the campaign better. Do you see? Now, and then I pull these together and I say, yeah, that kind of confirms that social media, third person might be help. In other words, someone else's influence, someone else's influence. So I would say, you know what, if I was running a campaign, I would say to my partner, you know what, I'm getting a reading that this is a great time to do this, but we need to ask so-and-so what they think, or I need to ask you, partner, what you think. Are there any last tweaks that you wanna make? So that's an example of how you might read the cards in pairs of three. The other way that I have found 
to um, read cards is literally to say, okay, I would just like some basic all overall information. I'm just going to start pulling cards or I shuffle. I'll shuffle and I'll be like, okay, let as many cards pop that, that you know you want me to have. Um, and let's say eight cards come out. I'll just be like one, two, three, four, five. Let's see if it was eight. Seven, eight. Is that right? No, that's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I can count. It's eight. So what I might do, now ignore the fact that these are all in order and I am just winging it, all right? I would say, well, in this particular situation, obviously there's something I need to get rid of. You know, I need to get rid of something. It's an un I'm, I'm just going to use work as an example, okay? Because we all know we can use this for our relationships and things of that nature. But I'm trying to give you an idea of how you can use this um, in an overall way so that you can use it every day to make a difference. Focus on you. Focus on what you're doing. And that's going to be very helpful for your relationship. All right. So... So let's say I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having a, a situation at work and I'm thinking, what do I need to do about this? And it's like, well, you know, you're, you're having a lot of things that are happening that you really don't want to do anymore. You need to get rid of it. It's time to make something new. It's time to break something down and make something new. Um, and this is by design. You know, everything's happening because you need to get rid of that something and you need to make something new. So everything is happening perfectly the way it's supposed to. So what might feel like a storm to you or a tornado, something being torn up is actually um, it's a it's a warning to you. It's saying, hey, something else has to change. And in order to get past this. Um, danger of the warning of the lighting uh, of the lighthouse you know um, if you don't do something about it you're gonna continue to be in a stand standoff a, a stalemate so something has to change you have to get rid of this in order to change it's all happening perfectly the storm uh, is here to give you the warning and to deal with a stalemate so that you can become more balanced and centered and come into a place of your own wholeness and wellness. You see how that works? So you can read these cards actually as a storybook to give you an idea of what is happening. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these cards off. Okay, so that's just a little bit about... Um, you know, I want to say the, the basic ways I use the cards to read. Now, it, a lot of times what I do is when I see two cards together, you know, I'm just pulling these two cards out. When I see two cards together, I will just sort of tune in to the symbology like yarn, you know, a cat and yarn being all tangled up. And then I'll be looking at finding, you know, this is a compass, and it's like, you're really annoyed because you aren't in the right direction. You're not moving in the right direction. This is giving you something to think about so that you can find your true north. So do you see how working with cards in pairs kind of gives you ideas of bouncing off? And what I find is, is that certain words pop out at me. And I've always felt that way about the books, you know, any of the books that I use. Um, the books, when I read the direction and definition, what ends up happening is, is certain words pop out. And when those words pop out, I kind of know that that's what my higher self is trying to tune me into. It's almost like they get spotlighted. So that may happen for you as well. If you just allow yourself to go into a, a higher space, sort of tune out everything else and tune into what your heart is telling you and then go back to your question. I find that if you kind of don't know where you're going with something, tune back into your question. You know, if the question is, you know, what's happening in my relationship right now? What is happening? Well, you know, well, in this particular case, we've got four cards here and that's not really helpful, but you know, let's just say, let's just say that this was the central card, okay? We've got a central card here that says annoyed, annoying, complicated, I'm being strung along, I feel all tied up, I'm in a conundrum, okay? 
you're thinking, oh gosh, well, that's not such a great thing. But the truth is, is that when you look at these cards next to them, it's kind of like things might be complicated and you might be in a conundrum, but if you do the work, there's a payoff for you on the other side that you know there will be the, the, the reward that you're looking for. Here we've got mortar and pestle, which is also about creating something new. So yeah, you might be annoyed, but it, you're trying to figure out a puzzle. You're trying to unravel something. You're trying to break something down and make something new. And guess what? When you do, you're going to have fireworks. So I do not want to make this video too long. Um, I think that what I'm going to do right now is um, go on to part two. I'm going to record part two for you right now. Um, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of time to shuffle the deck where you won't have to see me shuffling the deck. I will start my um, my reading for the week as soon as I've done really, really thoroughly integrating the energies of this deck. And then um, I'll kind of consider this a part two of this video so that you can see an actual reading with my brand new deck. And I will also, as I'm reading, I will give instructions as to how I'm coming up with what I'm coming up with. So it'll also still be a little bit instructional, but um, it will also be what's going to happen for your upcoming week. So anyways, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this part of my video. I hope you will come back and watch part two, which is going to be, let's see, we've got today is the 14th. So the reading is going to go from the 14th, seven days out for July. And then I'm going on vacation. I cannot wait. But I'm going to get my readings done um, so that there's a reading for you even when I'm on vacation. Oh, and I'm going to be doing some videos while I'm on vacation, really hoping um, to introduce a couple of new helpful ways uh, to present information. They're going to be completely different than this. So hopefully it'll fit right in with my channel. It's all designed to help on the Ascension path. So. Anyways, I'll see you in part two. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope it was of help. Namaste.